Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Hermit Craft Season 5, hanging out in the amazing underground world. Oh my goodness me, this place is so cool, right? And guess what I'm over here for? A couple of things. One thing I want to do is check to see if we've got any more customers. I love making storage systems, and it seems like a lot of you really enjoyed the last episode that we did with Ren as well. No new customers. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I also haven't heard back from Ren. He's still MIA. I don't know what's happened to him. Maybe his internet went out or something. But I hope he's alright. I do hope he's alright. And if we just pop down below, down here, you'll see that we have the bottom area for our shop. And we've got a new neighbour next door. You see this? Yes. We'll come back to that in a second. Uh, do I have an ender pearl? I have something to do. Stress is amazing redstone stuff. Oh, that must have been automatically dispensed to me. Yeah, I've been wandering around this place before I started recording, checking out the different shops. I thought, Stress Monster? Redstone? What? I didn't know she did redstone, and I got a, uh, a free thingy. Hi. Uh, let's jump around. Yeah, can you keep a secret? Can you keep a secret, okay? Don't tell Iskow. If I see a single comment over on Iskow's channel, I'm going to be sad, Suma. This is his Hitman shop. Uh, how to buy. Oh, <laughs> I didn't know there was too much to this. Let's check it out quickly. Uh, we're going to barcode Hermitcraft's best hitman services. Services, plural. Uh, we will, at any price, slay anything and or anyone. We provide any mob head fresh from their owners, as well as the killing of any hermit. Very key word there being any. In order to purchase one of our mob heads, please place a book with the mob head you need in this chest. A piece of paper is also fine if you are poor. <laughs> in order to purchase a hit on another hermit, place a piece of paper in the chest with your name and an episode number where you state... Whom you want us down. Example, Xuma598 would be a hit order from Asuma and the target revealed in episode 598. Interesting. Um, I got a feeling this might not work then. I, I, I wasn't aware of the book. Well, don't tell anyone. Let's just see what Iskow does, okay? Let's just see what Iskow does. I was never here, peeps. I was never here. Let's go away. <laughs> I'm going to get into all sorts of trouble now. This girl's going to be angry. It does say anyone. It does say anyone. So maybe there's a price. Maybe there's a price that will cause Iskow to kill himself. That I would actually like to find out. Um, right. Let's check out what's going on over here. This is Happy. And Happy needs lava. And Happy has also left behind some uh, <laughs> various boxes. No! Oh! Creepers, man. They be creeping. They'd be creeping up. Thank goodness that, that shulker box doesn't, you know, just disappear when a creeper blows it up. This place needs lighting up, Tango. You need to sort it out. <laughs> Let's light it up with lava. And someone will walk into that, maybe. I don't know. Let's make it walk into proof by putting blocks above it. Uh, I might have got carried away. We now have a hazardous entrance. <laughs> uh, but it will light the area up. It will possibly keep mobs out if they're stupid and they walk into that. I, I get distracted easily, don't I? Hi, meet Happy. This is Happy right here. He likes Happy's Fun Sauce, a.k.a. Lava. And I just happen to have a shulker box full of lava. Well, not quite full. <laughs> not quite full indeed. Well, if we go and feed Happy, Happy will be happy, funny enough. Uh, look at that. <laughs> Doing a dance. Oh, and Happy gives us a magma cream. Well, I don't actually need a lot of magma creams. But I was thinking I would help Tango with his quest for lava and feed him some of this because we've actually gotten crazy amounts of lava in the past, haven't we? All it takes is a couple of potions, a trip to a, 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 a lava lake, a, a never ocean, whatever you want to call it, and you can stock up with loads of buckets. So I think we should do that. We should come over here and feed Happy and see if we can rid Happy of all of his magma creams. I want you to go down to the comments and leave a comment. You know, don't, don't just go down there and look at them. Leave one, okay? How many lava buckets do you think it'll take to break Happy? That's what we're going to do. We're going to see how long it'll take to make Tango's redstone give. Um, I am going to go all out here and help out a friend. And I am going to take nine of those shulker boxes. Plus the one we already got. Ten of these. We're going to fill up ten of these with buckets. And we're going to try and break Happy. Now that means that I may need to make a lot of buckets and I think I've got a fair amount of iron left over which is good because I've been using tons of the stuff lately and our farm only has a few stacks left over there. Yeah, look at that. That should be enough for plenty of buckets. We've already got some here that have been crafted as well. 
And while I'm sorting these out, I want to remind you that tomorrow is live stream day for Hermitcraft. If you're interested in seeing it, I'm putting the schedule up on your screen so you can come along and you can hang out with me for a live stream on Hermitcraft. Let me know what you think of the fixed schedule as well, as uh, I'm hoping to see that more people will be able to come along to the live streams. Whatever weird and wonderful ideas you got floating around in your head, always be sure to give them a try, you know? And actually, that sounds kind of terrible when said out loud. I'm referring to our time lapse, of course. I had no idea that would be so much fun and so weird to watch as well. That was really crazy, wasn't it? Oh, let's keep feeding Happy some lava. Remember... We're trying to overfeed Happy. We want to break Tango's redstone here by feeding him too much lava. Oh! Okay, the lava's sticking around a little longer than usual. And Happy is shaking his arms like crazy. I think he's close to being filled up. Let's give him another piece of lava. How you doing? Are you able to eat it? I don't think you are. <laughs> we did it! We successfully broke Happy! He can't eat anymore, poor fella! <laughs> Oh, that's brilliant. All right, then. That only took me, what, one, two, not even two shulker boxes. Well, I will keep the rest. If Tango needs any more lava, he knows where to find me. <laughs> I'm the one who breaks his contraptions. Oh, that was good fun. That was good fun. I'm going to leave it like this for, for Tango to find. That's going to be hilarious. Oh, that's new. <laughs> that's definitely new. Wow, that is a vibrant pumpkin. Oh, I guess Halloween is near. <laughs> Let's have a look. Happy Halloween. To enter, hit the button on the right. Wells. Let's enter this pumpkin then. I like the sound of this. In we go. Oh, there's a hold something down. Should I press the button? Oh, that's the way out. Okay. <laughs> I thought something might happen. There's a cave down here. What's in the cave then? Oh, no. This is going to lead somewhere. Hang on a second. This is just this is just going to go into Scar's build, isn't it? Yes, it is. What was all that about then? <laughs> Why is there now a pumpkin to enter this area? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Let's get back to our base. So I had a plan for today's episode. I've been very inspired to work on several projects lately. And I was going to work on one of them over here. And I came up to the top and I thought, man, it's gone so dark and gloomy up here, even in the middle of the day. We should, we should get some glowstone. And then I took a trip over to... I didn't cover that back up. <laughs> Let's cover it back up. I took a trip over to the witch farm. And when I was over there, I started getting all sorts of inspiration to work on a storage system. Or at least upgrade the storage that we got 
over there got some interesting ideas for what we could do with the witch drops, right? So, what do I want to work on? i got to make up my mind. We're going to go work on the witch farm. I want an excuse to go over there and up the rates a little bit. I am running out of glowstone. I found this stack in a chest, and I believe it's the last stack of glowstone that I've got. And from the witch farm, I just went and got... Look at that. Not even two stacks. Okay, the rates over there are not good enough. We need to increase the rates. So I figured that we would uh, go around and light this up, check it out, head over to the witch farm and do something over there. Now one thing I've got to do while I do this is concentrate because it could be so easy for me to uh, miss one of these spots. We're basically going to put a glowstone under every little bit of carpet that's already here. This was only ever added to just add a little bit of variance to the flatness, right? And now it's going to act as lighting as well. Aha! I don't know if you heard... <laughs> I don't know if you heard that I could hear the Guardians again. I had a sneaky suspicion as to what was causing that. My camera account is currently looking at the Guardians. So you can hear the sound. The sound that you heard was from my other account. Because this one's muted. There we go. Ah... So it's when the Guardians attack the squid, you can hear that from really far away. That's kind of fascinating, isn't it? I must be at least 40 to 50 blocks away and I can hear that sound. There's the sound again, nice and loud that time. We can hear it again. <laughs> So that's what it was. Awesome. Also, I've been watching the squid spawning here. The guardians don't always attack them quickly. So one thing we do need to do is get a couple more guardians in here. That's going to be kind of tricky now because we put a roof on this thing. Oh, just enough glowstone to get the job done. Got a little bit left over. Got a green wall. Not sure where I picked that up from, but that's okay. Ah, we also need some rockets, because we need to check this out from above. Now, it's looking a little bit more like it used to do. It's got a dark patch over there where the villagers are. Didn't really dare to go into their area and break blocks, you know. Those villagers love to run wherever you give them an opportunity to. So let's take to the skies and let's check out how luminous this all is now. I like it a lot because it's not just lit up like the sunlight lighting up everything. It's got its dark patches, it's got a little bit of variance. Some areas lighter than others and you know they're all randomly placed around which just looks really superb overall. Totally stoked with how that turned out. It's time for some witchy business. See, I made a pun. It was going to be something about raining witches, but that stopped. Whenever I come through that portal, man, always a whole bunch of them drop down. So, loads and loads of shulker box we're bringing through. This one right here is full of bones, and that is to fill up this thing. We're going to make a modification to this, actually. Had a really, really clever suggestion that I want to show you in a bit. First of all, though, we're going to grab my axe. We're going to go in here and rip out a whole bunch of chests. I hope you ain't got items in. I think I used to store some building blocks, speaking of which, not building blocks, but uh, yeah, store a load of stuff in there. We're ripping out the storage system here, okay? I'm not happy with it. I don't think it's good enough. I think that we're going to build something better. The reason it's not good enough, there's another chest full of that stuff, is because for me to fish out the redstone and the glowstone, i got to go through these chests one by one. Oh, look at that. I missed a bit, you see. Not very good, is it? And then i got to check the hoppers behind them. And I thought I'd check these all already. Apparently I did a bad job of that as well. So not only is that kind of tedious, my skills at checking things ain't so great either. So we're going to tear this all down. We're going to rebuild this system. I'm going to take some inspiration from what we did with Ren the other day and do a new thing back here. And I think we're going to pack them into shulker boxes, which is why you saw what we had a moment ago. But not everything. Probably redstone, glowstone. I'm thinking sticks we could start to use as fuel. So being able to pick up some shulker boxes full of sticks would be pretty fantastic. And then some other stuff will probably make it like, you know, it fills up a chest full of sugar and spider eyes and then it gets rid of the rest. Maybe the same for bottles, you know. Oh, and we've also got these potions coming through. I should think about that, really. If ever I get the farm up and running where I stand here and whack them over and over again, then those potions are going to drop more frequently. I've got my plan now. We're going to have a free wide segment on either side. Now on this side it's probably going to be the same setup you've seen already. The items come across and they just get dumped into the chest like that. And that's going to be for the items that we're not keeping. And one of those items is gunpowder. We've got a gunpowder farm back at our base. If ever we need huge quantities of that, then we can come over here and you know make some adjustments. On the opposite side, the free things that we're going to keep 
will be redstone, glowstone and sticks. And we'll probably end up with like a dropper at the bottom or some sort of small container for each one that can hold the shulker boxes. And then behind it all of the redstone goes. So I'm looking at this thing like it's free wide. I'm thinking, okay, we could put like a little bit of a wall there to tie it into the stone bricks. However, when I ripped out these chests, I really love the idea of walking through here and going back into this area, which might be possible. We've got to figure out what's going on with the redstone here, because we were using this split system. The items go up the elevator, which we're going to keep, and then they go off to either side. Did you see that? Look at the water there. Sort of flashing at us. Why is it doing that? It's very strange. <laughs> so I've got to figure out how big the redstone is going to be. If it takes up a lot of space, then we might not be able to make like a little room here that you walk into to collect stuff. And also, this is going to be in the way as well. That's actually not going to be too much of a problem. That's what controls the witch farm up top. And I always, always forget to turn it off when I leave. And it hasn't ever broken. Um, so I've been kind of lucky there. But actually, now that I think about it, all we've got to do is move the torches over to the side a bit. Oh man, I've just I've just found something really bad out about this farm. Oh no, that's such a silly oversight. That's been affecting this since forever. <laughs> There's actually like a fair bit of redstone there. Let's have a look. Yeah, 11. I mean, for a few witches that have dropped down. Oh, we can see it in action now. They fall into the hoppers. So if they're if they're like in the Why is that not working? Why is my throw... Okay, look. My throw, my throw item key isn't working. If they're all the way on the side... No, they still drop in. Did it go all the way over? Oh, this whole time. Now, there you go. Okay, so this hopper is full. But if the item happens to be all the way over, then it can go over the edge. Otherwise, it falls into the hopper. So tons upon tons of items have been despawning here. That is terrible. I know you're going to hate me for this, but we're going to let all of these items despawn. Because I think the best way to uh, to get on with building is to get them out of the way. And these are things that I'm probably going to chuck. We're going to get loads of this all over again, don't you worry. But <laughs> I just like this site, you know. Not often that you see all these crazy items scrambled across the ground like this. Those zombies sure do groan. I've been working behind there on the redstone, listening to them rattle for hours. <laughs> it's been crazy, but... This is looking pretty cool. I need to put some item frames over here to show the items that we're keeping. But this is a shulker box compactor like we built in our base, like we built for Scar. Not the same one we built for Ren. And it's all ready to go, but nothing's come through here just yet. Probably still got a little bit of configuring to do. So, over on this side, we then have a whole bunch of chests. And these have been staggered backwards this time, so the items will always flow all the way down to the bottom and not get caught in the hoppers behind and you can see that things are coming through already which is fantastic this little look here might have room for one or two bushes as well just to keep that look going you can see we've got some lamps up there for lighting that's pretty cool over on this side less flexible because you need to access a lot of this stuff right we can't put a block here we could put it at the hopper height on its own which is going to look very odd <laughs> um yeah, I think that's about as much as we can get away with on this side. Let's just put one up there as well. Okay, anyway, let's wander around the back and let's see the redstone that goes into this. It's actually kind of simple, but probably looks kind of crazy, as there's just stuff going on everywhere. So let's break it down. This free wide section right here is our item sorter that's going to pack the items into the shulker boxes. You can see some sticks have come through. I don't know how that got in there. We're waiting for redstone and glowstone to come through here. I did set up the item filters, but I think they're they're filling that up, if that makes sense. So this one has 41 in, yeah, and steadily these numbers are ticking up a little bit. So now that redstone will go down below. Anyway, when the shulker boxes are in place, then this will do its business packing those items into shulker boxes for storage. So our item elevator over here no longer splits the items into two channels. It takes them across and around. They go over those hoppers there, as you saw, the redstone just got picked up. Perfect demonstration. <laughs> they do a little U-turn round here and they drop down below. And when they're down there, they take a, a turn to the side. Now, this aligns all of the items up on the far side, which is important. As you saw a moment ago, they can get caught inside the hoppers. So that's not going to happen. All the other items that don't get filtered by those three come around here and they can go into the chest, thanks to these hoppers. Now, when these are filled up all the way up, they will go over the edge and fall down into that hole. And I was thinking, let's destroy it with lava. Let's also make sure we've got some blocks on our hot bar, some dirty durite. Uh, there is lava back here that I'm aware of. So we could put lava all the way at the bottom there. And if I put that here, 
and this there nope uh, I've got to break that block there we go I believe the items will fall down that side and go into the lava whereas we can just walk straight over the top of it so that's for us to get by and I didn't want to put the lava too close to this wood what I could have done is probably put a cactus in that area so that's how all of the redstone works I think I've showed you everything haven't I there is one other thing this lever that we used to turn the witch farm on and off it now has to go in this space over here it used to be in that space where the wood is so I simply switched over the redstone torch it goes up a little bit and then there you have a piece of redstone on that block to sort of pass it over to the side so it works the exact same way it's just been moved over a little bit after all that hard work I thought I'd treat myself to some caving feels like it's been a while since I did this gonna work on getting our spawn rates up by lighting up the caves that are nearby that was a dup you never saw that okay I didn't just break that without using my silk touch pick which I got right there that's why I leave it in my inventory but it's running down so we're using this one so I just found a big old cave here and I think I'm not sure if it's part of the same cave but over here as well this is where I can hear the mobs spiders hissing zombies groaning that one's got some goldy boots on so we're gonna pop down into here and we're gonna light it all up and hopefully it'll make a difference to the witch farm in the long run man I think a bat just swam into the lava or flew into the lava and another one did it as well you bats are silly are you going in there as well you fancy a dip <laughs> what is it you like the heat or something stay away from there you silly goose here's another perk of doing a little bit of caving lapis I do believe I'm running very low on this stuff so I'll be sure to pick some up while we go around and now we found a lava lake oh and that leads us to another cave don't blow up that chicken I don't know why there's a chicken in this cave. Can anyone explain? Okay. Ugh. You, where's the other one? Okay. <laughs> How did you get down here? Maybe this cave leads to the surface. Otherwise, I don't know how one would find its way down here. Here is a fantastic indicator that you're in caves that are loaded. I've come quite a ways out. I'm not sure how far away I am from the witch hut. But how could these mushrooms have spread so much? There's loads of them in this area. They wouldn't have naturally spawned like this, which means that this area has been loaded for some time, right? And that's because I've been over at the witch farm. So mushrooms give you a healthy indicator as to how long the cave has been loaded for. So we know we've got to light this one up. I found you. You're all hiding down in this cave, ain't you? Oh, no, they're all free. Um, of course, the water. Hang on. Let's just back up for a second here. Okay, no one's allowed in this part. Right, you'll stand there and get wrecked. This guy looks mean, and look at his legs wearing that iron armor. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Felt like I found a new mob, you know. This is just a zombie villager. They've been retextured a while ago. Yeah, his legs look crazy with that iron armor on. I found a notch apple as well in a dungeon. That was pretty good. I'm back from my caving adventure. That was certainly worthwhile. I enjoyed doing that. And this flower farm right here, we've got a couple of modifications to it. Okay, this first one is something that a few people pointed out. Kind of obvious, we don't need all of these hoppers. I talk about that, trying to reduce the amount that we use. We can put water going across here. And actually, how many blocks have we placed? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, so one more over. So at the end, you need two hoppers like that. Uh, that's pretty cool. Also, while we're here, we're going to disable this redstone. So we're about to do an experiment. I had a suggestion that I thought was extremely cool, but I wasn't sure if it would actually work or not. So we're going to give that a try. Now, how do I get up to the top there? Well, I'll make myself a staircase for now, and we'll put the water in over at this end. So all the drops will get pushed along to the two hoppers at the end. Very good. Now, the suggestion that I had was to include an observer block inside the flying machine to automatically activate the dispensers down below. That is an extremely good idea. We just got to make sure we put this in the right place. I believe that is going... Well, there it is. There's, there's the dispenser that we're looking for. So we have to place this from below upwards. So we're going to have one there. Then two blocks over on this side, we'll have another one here. So let's break that. And if we pop down here and place the observers, they will be facing downwards. So they're going to output a redstone signal in this direction. I don't think that's going to interfere with anything else in this farm. And yes, we're going to replace that with slabs and water. Don't worry. But if we come around to this side, you'll see that's going to face into the block directly above the bone mill. Now, the reason I think this might not work is because that block will have a block above it 
when the bone mill is activated. So either the bones are going to then, or the bone mill is going to grow around it, like all the grass and flowers, they'll be around it, or it won't happen at all. Let's find out. We're going to see this straight away. And it looked like it actually grew, but nothing like before. Okay, so it's activating all of them as it goes over. But look at this, not a lot of flowers. Now there's a way we can make an immediate comparison. If we just chuck a bit of redstone at the bottom there, it just created a signal. Let's put one on the other side as well. Okay, it gets over to the other side. Look at how many more flowers turned up that time. Okay, let's watch it again. Bam, loads. I think it's better to do it the way we had. That is a very cool idea though. I am not knocking that idea in the slightest. I think it's awesome. It just looks like we're not going to get as many flowers with it. I might have been a bit quick to jump to a conclusion there. It does feel like you get less flowers, but then again, they're not all growing at once. And as you can see, when the machine's gone in that way, there's quite a few of these left behind. So I think the best way to figure this one out is to do a test, right? So two stacks of bone meal inside each dispenser and first of all we did it with the observer blocks they went across and back many many times and then I removed them I didn't forget to remove them and did the test again once again with two stacks of bone meal so first test with the observer block that's how many drops you get second test you definitely get more right so I haven't bothered to count them up individually because clearly you get quite a bit more over or around 9 to 10 stacks extra. So we're going to leave it like that. It was a good idea, but it's slightly less efficient. We are almost done here, almost done with this project. The last thing for me to do is to tidy up the big old mess of uh, chests and shulker boxes that are left behind. And uh, this little fella got himself caught on that trap door, I think. His AI doesn't work too well with trap doors and ender chests. Been there for a while after roaming around. Oh yeah, and we're walking into a newly decorated area. So let's check it out, right? Uh, this is what I've done with this area. I guess that chest needs to go as well. So there's a little walk down to be level with this and look into there. We've got that interface on the side and you can see this one over here is basically mirroring that one. So I need a block to go at the bottom. That is actually a thing that I have forgotten. So a bone block here, an item frame with bone meal inside of it, and I think that represents what's going on pretty well, right? And this right here actually looks a little bit off. Originally that was just flat, but then I decided to put an interface in for that bit. I think what we could do is perhaps just remove a few blocks here and then wrap it around the corner. By the way, everything here is pretty much a squeeze. For example, that block right there is actually essential to the slime farm above it. You can see it drips with water, so that meant that the pattern here had to start with stone block, stone bricks blocks. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. They had to start with them in that position. And that actually looks a little bit nicer. Do you know what else? I keep falling down into that hole. I reckon we could put a, uh, a trim across the top here as well. So let's go and check out the main room over on the side. Looking pretty cool, right? Do you like that roof design? It's nothing too impressive. I basically wrapped stair blocks around the glowstone because there was a two wide gap between parts of it and a one wide gap between the others. And that kind of determined everything, really. The whole pattern revolved around that. So then we went with some clean walls around the outside. Did my best to hide some of the stuff you can see behind, like redstone, but some of it was unavoidable. And so all these little gaps around the leaves here have mostly been sealed. Looks like I kind of missed a bit down there, maybe. And uh, let's hop out of here. So mobs ain't able to spawn over here. We've got slabs, then we've got a couple of stairs. So we don't need to worry about the lighting in that position. And the rest of it is really well illuminated. Now over here on the far side, there is blocks all around the bottom there, glowstone underneath the chest, and that's how you pick up um, the bits that come out of the farm. I was considering adding some redstone, but I felt like that might overcomplicate things a little bit. We got this chest here for the bone meal, of course, and then the same thing over on this side. Looks like I missed a block there. There we go. And you can collect the goodies from that side. A creeper just got me and gave me an actual heart attack. I actually I actually just want to let my heart rate calm down now because that was so alarming and behind it a zombie followed it as well. I know where they came from. On occasion I've seen a mob in here and it's been so confusing because the whole area is lit up. Well, I have managed to miss a tiny area. Now I don't want these items to despawn. Where is that redstone lamp? You're supposed to go there. That's obviously lighting the floor. It actually fell down from up above here and I didn't think there are any spaces for mobs to spawn but looking at it, 
you can clearly see some, so I think I've made an oversight there, or well, something has changed. Let's go and grab some leaf blocks. We don't really have a lot of the ones that look good in this biome, do we? So that means I've got to go and grow some more leaves, or oh, goodness me, maybe I'll just cover up some slabs. But let me show you where it is exactly if we just hop up here. They fell down from this spot, and you can kind of see that actually they might be able to spawn there. Yeah, look, there's some too high spaces. Right. Well, it's just these two chests to tidy away now. All the other shulker boxes have gone. No, no, they haven't. There's still this one here as well. <laughs> and by the way, the entire time I've been in the area, loads of witches have been spawning. So that caving that we did earlier seemed to have a really big impact on this, which is cool. I don't think we've got an extra one of these boxes through yet, and neither of those. But I'm going to keep AFKing here. I really want to get ourselves a box full of glowstone and redstone. But that is going to be it from me this episode. I do hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, leave a like on the video. As always, thank you for your support on this series. And I'll see you in the next episode of Hermitcraft. So ciao for now. Bye-bye.